So, um, Amos, uh, please take it away. Tell us about the future. It's not the future, how do you make it secure now? So, using, of course, Helm 2, you know, Taylor, our, our back issues. So, we're going to talk how to make it secure till we get Helm 3. So, what I oh, mean, just call me, Amos, don't worry about my last name, especially. So, I co founded Helm. Rock Chorus, Essentials book, CTA as well, the usual thing. So adopted Kubernetes in 2014. Basically wrote my paths in Bash on Chorus clusters to orchestrate containers. Afterwards, Kubernetes came up. Cool. That's a good, all the other things. So, now I'm working as senior solution developer at JFrog. And we love open source, we love Helm, so we're doing a lot of Helm internally. So Kubernetes. Yeah, you get Kubernetes like with 10,000 foot view, so every scene that, so nice and good. So afterwards, no what? Of course, I want to run my applications, run my things, and deploy apps, collaborate apps, share apps. So basically, what you're looking like? Simple API to interact with Kubernetes. But of course, and you get this. You get loads of 20 percent basically. We have more on Kubernetes, so we have to manage all that stuff. Start doing quick Helm intro, not, because maybe not always familiar. So. so with Kubernetes templates, you get, using Kubernetes templates, you get challenges. So, rapid script to manage applications, contacts, lifecycle. So basically the same rapid script has to manage dependency management. Conventions like file name and folders and so on, so on, so on. So on. Sharing as well between teams or templates. So it becomes more and more complicated. So, why Helm exists? So, make applications easy to run, maintain them, share them. So, with Helm, basically, with Helm, we too as well, we sort all those issues like Helm release, Helm CLI, subcharts, Helm create starters, Helm templating, Helm repository. So we sort that problem. Cool. Sounds very cool, yes? For a license. And of course now the Helm 2 got there in cluster today, which really not in favor of many people. Which of course interacts with Clem client, interface of the API server, does all that magic magic listens, combines shards, does one, release, upgrade, checks over. <coughs> All sounds good. It looks like this. Helm, Tiller are runs in a cluster. Helm client connects to a Tiller. Nice magic. Yeah, we have to use Arbuck. If you're not using Arbuck these days, we have to be fooled because it's no security at all. So okay. Arbuck cluster. Cool. So we have to install Tiller. Create a Tiller service account, assign Role binding for Tiller, deploy Tiller, and it's amazing set. But there is a one big but. Tiller runs your Kubernetes cluster with superpowers. It can do anything. That's a problem. So imagine you need to run that for your teams. So you have to run, uh, basically go with the same setup for every team. And you have 20 teams or multi-tenancy, so what? Tenants, hundreds of them. So imagine you have to run Tiller for each tenant. So every tenant in that namespace, it will still be a super, we have a superpower guy running inside the cluster, or many of them. And in afterwards, look into this, like the best practice at a screenshot taken for a uh, docs. Plus to RBAC, you want to do TLS, encryption between Tiller and Helm client. And you have to maintain afterwards all that. So it becomes more and more and more and more. Of course, at the beginning when Helm v2 was written, we had no RBAC. We, I don't think so even we had secrets at that time. So we, we swipe the default Helm to the stores, I think, in config mask, but we, of course you can use such secrets as well. 
But so imagine, again, do all that headache, you have to manage all this as well. So, kids, this is way too much. Yeah, these workarounds. See, every uses that, like that, even East Turkey. Pipe Helm template, template output to keep control. Awesome, but where do you do upgrades? I don't think so, it's easy afterwards. Try it. Especially, try to install that way, but complex app. It's many, many, many subcomponents or microservices. It will, won't fail when first install, but you are going to upgrade, I don't think so, it will be easy. I'm not selling to Helm now, or basically, but explaining, avoiding Tiller like this, it's not a really good option. But ideally, from day one we got Helm 2, we can run Tiller outside of cluster. Because your Helm client talks to the Kubernetes cluster. So Tiller can talk the same way to Kubernetes cluster as well, running together on the same local host on your workstation, on, in the same Docker in container, together with Tiller, Tiller and Helm. So basically, just have to specify if I need to ex use particular namespace. So, like this is my team namespace, you can specify namespace particular. You wanna, you wanna lock to a local host only. So, local host only, Tiller listens on local host only. And of course, Tiller storage secret makes it more secure. That's, that's it. Basically, what you need, only that. Running together to your home client, that's it. You, you solve the security problem. And you get this. So we have Kubernetes cluster, and that's together, Helm and Tiller running. And nothing to manage here. No TLS, nothing, because we'll both run on local host. Helm client connects to Tiller, Tiller connects to, to Kubernetes. And the good thing is, oh, okay, let me come back. Wherever you have set up your Kubernetes cluster that Tillery uses, whatever you have your, 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 your kubeconfig file, Tillery use it. Tiller use it. You don't, Tillery doesn't care how you connect your cluster. It's basically up to you to make Kubernetes cluster secure. And of course, all of this very aligns well with Helm three security considerations. So, tolerance, the idea of permissions of Kubernetes user, account or service account, which was executing the commands. Cool. So, RBAC applied for each user, of course. Because you have kubeconfig file. So, that's kubeconfig file per user. So, whatever you secure your cluster, it gets reused. So, now TLS managing yourself, make your cluster secure from the beginning. And audibility. You can check which user what did. Create it. So that brings us good news. Cool. That is, it's a secure and scalable. So we can scale Tiller as many as you want because you don't have Tiller at all. We just run at that, that time, at the point of a time we do a deploy upgrade or check. That's it. And we stop it. And basically afterwards it looks like this. Many Tiller, Helm and Tiller combinations. Could be IPI from CLI, from ER, whatever you could have, and you connect your cluster. Every get different config file, different RBAC rules for that user. And they deploy to a particular namespace they allow to. So to make that easier, I wrote some Helm plugin for that. So basically, to start, stop, and it has more features. I'm not listed here, but it's on the takeaway page. So make it easier. And by the way, we using Tiller as Helm in production at JFrog. We recently launched the X-ray pass for customers, totally Kubernetes based, and Tiller as Helm is running contrary. Totally the same way. Even including my plugin. So that's all automation included. So, and plugin is good as well. You can it makes easier your life on your workstation. We're going to show demo, especially using the plugin. So.
So the other type of things, so I wrote all commas, I can go one by one. So first command will run tiller. Helm tiller run, that's a basic tiller plugin call. And it runs my command tiller upgrade install. And so I'll start manager this time. So I create two namespaces for my app. And here I'm going using Google Cloud Build because I, I think I deploy a GK cluster. So Cloud Build has this. Upgrade this in the so file bit, namespace, up one, stable, computing. So Tiller is true. And by the way, this Helm builder is official as well at Google Cloud community ones. So can use it nicely. And another one, CS specify again, different namespace. And I have to specify Tiller namespace, so the same one. So I I know in that namespace, Tiller stores the releases. Whatever I release will be only that namespace. So we, we, we don't collide to each other, and you have a namespace per user, we won't see different releases. So we can go to questions afterwards. So, so going around this one. Home checks. Start manager doesn't exist. Everybody should be familiar with start manager, but I play scoop level. Awesome cool stuff, but ISA doesn't support it anymore. That's bad basic for me to aside. So it's, it's moved on. Because I installed like a start manager from my local workstation, as you saw here, because running here. And cloud build installs in the cloud. Like this. Who's, who's familiar with Cloud Build or GKE one? Basically, it's just as a, it's kind of a free Jenkins for you. Better than Jenkins. Yeah, better. I don't use Jenkins at all. I use just that. If I GKE, I just use Cloud Build. Nothing else. I don't need anything. It's just so automated, so magically done. And right now, I see the output because I triggered from my workstation, but exactly which, which if I go to <coughs> console, I will see Cloud Build running cover and deploy to my VM, yeah. to my to, sorry to my cluster. It pulls as first, of course, it pulls Helm, Docker image. It'll start installing. Yes, it's cloud builder community, builders community, and you have over here you can find loads of different builder tools. So this is the Helm Docker image, which of course has Tillerless as well. All examples of half of here, because I made them, so we're using them exactly. And to, to build the Helm build, just run locally this command, okay. git clone. You get that. So you, you can manage your. Okay, cool. So now we see visual Helm setup, but I'm using Helm in a client because I don't want to install anything to a cluster. So I just want to set up a client only part. So no till install, do client only. Cool. So I installed it. Installing Tiller as plugin, plugin installed, version starting Tiller, and <coughs> Tiller namespace up, up one. And now Helm is doing, but not opening anything, but we can <coughs> check. Yeah, I have cap like cube control, get all names, get names. From all names, it's all parts, so basically it's easier. So I already see my app one. It's already done on Kubernetes part. Yeah, cool. It's already here as well. See? Now it's moved on to second one build, which is basically installing our artifactory open source one. Of course, installing to different namespace, to a different user. 
if I check here, you should see now more things. <coughs> see, the third manager, we have it. I installed myself for my workstation from as a different complete user. And Cloud Build uses different user with different hardback roles as well. Because it's allowed to install to use app one and app two. Yeah, at the factory. Here I have weight, because in our, this is more complex application, so I put weight time out, six minutes, because if you have, if you have multi microservices, it's better to wait. It basically is recommended to wait to check the application up. Or you, can, you cannot wait, you have to work, you have to do keep control and Magic and check again. Okay. okay, still it does. Okay, now if I run Helm, alas, I won't see anything because there is no tiller running in my cluster. So I run a cluster tiller. <coughs> Basically, that's a plugin. LS. Because we're using the phone to connect to. Wi Fi got busted, so. Yeah, so see, I installed three different applications. But I see only my one. Because by default, if you don't specify my namespace, you use kube system one by default. So of course, I see this one. And kube system for tele releases you should use for all your global things like Istio. Start manager, things like that. And afterwards, if you have application based, but you should install per application. And if you want to divide by tiller wise as well. So now, if I specify here up one, <coughs> see, I see file beat. And here, see, I don't see any tiller. It's not running. It's not running on my machine as well, it's not running cloud, because it's already done. It stops afterwards. If up two. See? Three different helm releases and tiller stores in two different places. Where? Sorry. Where, where does it store it? Because I specify this. Sorry. Tiller namespace. Uh, all right, so it stores it in a Kubernetes namespace. Okay. Yeah. Secrets. Yeah. yeah. If I lock the user to the right namespace, so and I tell Tiller to store that namespace, so it's a user sees only his releases and nobody else. And he kind of damage anything. Because if you lock your user to only one namespace. Uh, when you say Tiller namespace, it's not the namespace that you are installing Tiller. No, we're not installing Tiller. We're not installing Tiller anymore as a yeah. Well, we specifying where to keep the releases of, it, <coughs> of Tiller releases. Yeah. Oh, nice. This is what I meant here. So Tiller releases are stored for this app in app two. This is app one, and this is a general one because I didn't specify the Tiller namespace for releases. So we that went to Kube system, but default one. The global one or should stay global one, so. Yeah. 
got all of us all exposed and I think. <coughs> so, any questions? Yeah. Uh, well, wait, two questions. Uh, the first one. Uh, you said that uh, you don't need to set uh, TLS between help and tiller because now tiller is running in your local in your local host. And uh, from help to the API server, it has the same privileges as the user that executes the Helm command, right? Yeah, whatever you use user pro whatever could config provide for the user that that privileges we have. Oh okay, yeah so if you want for example you run a cert manager in cube system and the user that is running help needs uh, you need to uh, have permission enough to deploy something in yes. system yeah yeah okay that was the first question the second question quickly is I installed today Helm and was two point ten version and it was latest two point eleven yeah, but, but, yeah, okay. Don't be different, but... Uh, 2.0 is a tillerless question, right? No, no, no. no. Two, tillerless, you can run from 2.0. It's uh, two things. It's, it's, so it's a different architecture, and there's, and there's a plugin that helps you run it, right? Yeah, no, I made a plugin to make it easier, but even without plugin, you can run tiller yourself. Make tiller connect to via kube config to IPI, mm -hmm. that's it. But plugins makes it easier. But I made it myself, but now I decided to like it, so cool, so it's not a problem. Plugin, like plug, where you can make plugins for Kube Control, so <coughs> the same, I think it came off of Hill. Oh. But Tillerless, call it Tillerless could be from day one when you release it to Hill. But nobody did that because when you built the release, there was no Arbok. So nobody Scarce. thought that's an issue, but when Arbok came out, <coughs> okay, Tillerless, oh sorry, Tiller, Super power user in Kubernetes, it's not the way to go. Especially, you want a multi tenancy. Yeah, the official recommendation points you or drives you to install help with Tiller. Uh, yes. Yeah, the original, yes. It's nothing changed there till Helm 3 gets released. But this is basically yes. takes the problem away right now mm -hmm. and makes it easier for you to move to Helm V3 because you already applied everything. Just remove a plugin, put Helm 3, you don't. Know. When will this Helm 3 coming out? Summer, summer, I think summer. I don't know how much you're summer. involved with uh, Helm 3, but um, this adheres to a lot of the Helm 3 principles. Do you have any idea how much, how big of a jump it's going to be from this type of system to Helm 3? Basically, just remove a plugin. That's it. You remove a plugin box. See, plugin brings those extra small commands, basically. See here. But Helm 3 itself is not going to do like wild format changes and how releases are being installed and stuff. Sure, it will be the same, I guess. It's very, very similar. It's not, it's not, not, not it won't be big. Taylor decoupled, yeah. one binary file thing. So, and you see, I have Helm, basically, Helm, Taylor is a plugin name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, okay. You take that part away. That's it. Put the Helm tree, and the same applies, no problem, because you're using Arba, could config, will be totally fine with Helm tree, so it's really easy to show. I mean, as I mentioned, we're running that in production. Mm. Already. And um, X-ray SAS on Kubernetes. So it's just, yeah. And one question. Um, <coughs> we got a given problem. We used to run at the hand template and start the the chat and the uh, custom value file in the Git repository and whenever you can draw back, you can draw back easily with the hand tillerless like this what kind of advantage or less advantage because I see that on the release at the config map it's stored in the, in the namespace so if namespace is deleted, it's gone yeah, you can right? delete yourself from my you mean that to, to, to compared to hand template, I still, maybe it's still more convenient what do you think? because that it is, depends how you protect your cube system yeah. Oh, okay, in spaces. Yeah, because that for now we store the, the, the release in the, in the application namespace rather than... No, no, it doesn't matter. No, you can have particular namespace <coughs> per team. Okay. Just store tell you, I just for simplicity made the same. But usually you can have a namespace. Team 1, 
and you have one, two, three, ten different ah, okay. apps. So it's and it's separate from application. Totally, it's up to you. You can use the same, whatever needs oh. space to use. It, it. Be it doesn't matter. Secure, otherwise, yeah, it's yeah. gone and then it cannot so go back. If you delete the namespace, you will keep your. No, we have to have namespace because default namespace is. It's, it's, it's not used at all. Should be nobody is using. Should be using de default namespace at all for anything. Because Actually, this is better, right? Because if you do it this way, then your configuration, at least the the Taylor ones, are split over uh, your namespace. It's like you suggested. Yeah, but if you have a bigger team, you have more apps, yeah. and you want to control the team, so we can have a team namespace and put. All the releases out there, yeah. or per app. It's up to you. It's, it's totally flexible. But in the release, we have a lot of password and credential inside that. And then if that stores that high in the namespace, you should be careful. No one else can access. No, this is this is why you have Arbac. Yeah. Arbac is the main, main, main thing. Control who gets access to every namespace. Even cube system. And then it comes with problem that the builder has the, the one who deployed goes right to that namespace has a high permission. It's not a tiller. It's the user the in the kube yeah. config file. Exactly. The, the user has no, but it's exactly the same if you use kube system and use old we way. We, it's exactly we, the same way. We Even have more. to uh, worry about that, the things that on the release content credential is stored in Kubernetes in, in the config map. The config map is not really secure. This is why I'm recommending to use kube. By default, my plugin uses secret. I'm not using config maps at all. Ah, okay. Because if you look back here, I think uh, probably the secret. Yeah. I made a, I, for me it's for default. I specify that it gets secret. Config map has to be for config. Yeah. Uh, if two users um, deploy on the same uh, namespace, can they uh, control both of the both of the um, deployments, both of the Helm charts? Um, if you don't deploy to the same app at the same time, you totally. You can deploy 20 apps to this using into, into the same namespace, and you can control all of them. When, uh, yeah. Whatever user deploys them on, on that space, on that namespace, right? Because each Helm release gets separate, my, in this case, secret per release. Mm -hmm. So we not call it each other. Okay. So you can deploy as many as you want mm -hmm. applications. Of course, you never ever deploy to the same amount twice at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all two different applications in the no. same namespace. Yeah. It's totally fine. Okay. Uh, your plugin has like some requirements uh, for like a uh, hand version, or it was it works for every every hand version. So it like depends every, on every, every. But from 2.11, what is good, Helm. Mm -hmm. With the Helm tar, you get Tiller as well binary. Mm -hmm. And I check my plugin checks. If you use the upstream Helm, download the, get, I think it's called get script, it downloads for your Helm and, and Tiller, mm -hmm. and installs the particular, whatever, under bin somewhere. So my plugin checks where is the Tiller already, it matches the same Helm you have, it just copies. If there is no Tiller, it downloads the Tiller. So basically, I try to make as much as possible as not to download it if I can. So if there is Tiller, use it. But of course, Helm has to exit, otherwise it fails. Because otherwise you won't be able to install anything, because there is no Helm. But a good practice, if you do containers, images, pack everything in your main image. But you got a Helm release, Tiller, so plugin, everything is packed, so you control. Is there an easy way to go from the classical uh, Helm install to a Tiller list install? Oh yeah. Okay. So we have my blog post, the Tilleris plugin, film tree, somebody interested. Good thing. Somebody wrote the con how to convert Tiller config maps to secrets. Yes. Run that, I think it's converted to secrets. Yeah. In, a, in a different namespace as well? Yeah, whatever. You can copy secrets easily. Oh, yeah. I think I know it I think it does in namespace so and afterwards that's it, run Tiller. Tillerless thing. And I film builder. I'll publish with uh, Slides on the speaker deck and put, put your comments on this. No, no, it's, it's, we, what I mentioned, we're running this in production. Are there any downsides at all of running uh, Tiller locally? Or any functionality that's not available or is it just the same no. as is? Tiller doesn't care how it connects to a cluster. 
Ekstena interna. Vora vos tam issue to connect su GKE cluster so just had it extra library to tether. No. No scope. You got GKE so it's fine. So what I will run extend it. It's no different. You know you write an app to how to connect to API Kubernetes API. It runs internally. Or in cluster, off cluster, functionality is the same because you talk to API. Yeah. First yeah. an applause. I want the applause. Yeah.